The product is called Azure Static Web Apps, and it was announced at Build, it was in May. And this product is currently in preview, and it's also currently free of charge, so you can all go and try it out. Something about myself, I'm an instructor at BCIT, I'm an independent contractor, and also I had the honor of being an MVP since 2017, and I also happen to be the leader of this meetup group. So about the product, Azure Static Web Apps. The idea here is it simplifies the hosting of a single page application or a static web app together with its API under one website in Azure. And the API is based on Azure Functions. And it provides for a single unified workflow using GitHub Actions. As I said, the API is delivered through Azure Functions. So it's a serverless API powered by Azure Functions, and it has built-in authentication with flexible roles and access rights. You can always upload and deploy a static web app in Azure. This is not something like, oh, we can do that today. No, you were able to do that before. And the common solution for this was using blob storage. However, if you use blob storage, then you need to set up your own API, your own content delivery network, your own traffic manager, etc. This new service, Azure Static Web Apps, it integrates all of this and makes it much easier. That's the benefit of using Azure Static Web Apps. Now, the technologies that are supported today are React, Angular, View, and the new kid on the block is Svelte. That's another one of these SPA technologies. So it's in preview and you can use it for pre-production environment. It's not recommended that you use it for production environment simply because it could change. One good thing that I found that's pretty cool about static web apps on Azure is you can customize a domain for your website and Azure provides you this SSL certificate. So you don't need to buy one, which is pretty cool. And of course, CI CD is powered by GitHub Actions. Now bear in mind that this is in preview. Among other things, Azure DevOps is not supported yet. Only GitHub Actions can be used for workflow. And also I discovered that cores is not yet supported on your deployed API. Of course, everything works because your static web app and your API, they reside under the same web application. So there is no course problem. But if you want to access the API portion of your deployed application from say a mobile phone or something like that, then you would end up with a course problem. And this is something that will be resolved in the future. And the regions at the moment are limited to these regions, Central US, East US, East Asia, West Europe and West US. Officially, there's no support for Blazor. However, today we're going to be using Blazor with some customization, Blazor works quite well. At the moment, only node-based Azure functions are supported. Of course, in the future, all the other types of technologies like c -sharp, Azure functions, etc., will be supported. The supported out-of-the-box authentication providers at this moment are Twitter, Google, Facebook, Azure Active Directory, and GitHub. So what are we doing today? Today, we're going to build two applications, an API application based on Node and a Blazor application based, of course, on Blazor and c -sharp. This, by the way, is not a tutorial on Blazor. If you're not familiar with Blazor, it doesn't really matter. Blazor is just yet another single page application technology. As long as you understand that it's just an SPA, we don't really need to get into the details of how it works. That could be something we'll cover another day. Anyways, once you have this application, you can push it into GitHub. And as soon as you push it into GitHub, it's going to trigger a workflow. Now we've discovered that the first workflow is going to fail because some of the configurations are not there yet. We'll sort of tweak that until it works and then it can get deployed into Azure. Now the API that I'm demonstrating today is going to be interacting with a Cosmos DB backend database. And this is just to make it more interesting. So that's what we're about to do today. So I think we can get started. Let's go to my Cosmos DB. So I created an instance of Cosmos DB simply because it takes a long time to provision. And if I click on Data Explorer here, 
Normally, if there are any databases, they would show up under SQL API. At the moment, there's no databases. But when we build our application, it's going to automatically create a database and a container here. Now, if we want to interact with Cosmos DB, we need two parameters here, and they are the URI and the primary key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and pack them in Notepad, because I'll be using them later on. So this is my endpoint, and I'm going to take this key here and park it over here. So pretty much I can leave that for the moment. And let's get started with my demo. So the first thing I want to do is create a working directory for my application. So my application is going to consist of a node API based on Azure Functions and a Blazor app. I'm going to start building my API application based on Azure Functions. So I'm going to make a directory and I'll call it AZ Static Web Apps. Okay. And in here, I'll go into that directory. And in that directory, I'm going to make a new directory. And I'm, I'm just going to call it API. So this is where I'm going to build my Azure Functions application. And let me open up this folder in VS Code. By the way, because I'm doing this in VS Code, you can do this app on a Mac or Linux or whatever. So now that I'm here, I need to have the Azure Functions extension, which is this one here. So I installed that before. Now that we have that, I'm going to create an Azure Function project. That's done by clicking on this Create New Project, this one here. And it's asking me for the location where I want to create this project. I'm going to choose this folder that I just created. And it's going to be based on JavaScript. In other words, Node. So I'm going to choose JavaScript. It would be a simple HTTP trigger based function. And I'll give it a name. So a suitable name for this is products get. And the, the reason I'm calling it products get is because the first thing I want to do is to, to be able to get data. So hit enter there. And to make it easy, I'm just going to be using anonymous authentication. This is what we get as a template. And let me just run this to see that it's working. So I'm going to hit Control F5. And you can see now that it's starting the server. And we should see something happening here. Okay, here we have an endpoint here. So if I hit Control click in Windows, it should open for me in a browser. And what do we get here? This is just a hello world type application and it just asks you to enter a query string. So I'm going to say name equals to Superman. I hit enter, it will come back and say, okay, hello Superman. So this template works and our Azure functions work. So we can get out of this and let's stop our app and do something more interesting. To do something more interesting, let's look at the Azure function itself. So we have here this function.js. And if you look at this section here, it's basically saying that this particular endpoint responds to the get method and the post method. Now I just want to use gets. So I'm going to delete the post part of things. I'm going to use a specific route for this. So I'm going to add another entry here and call it route, okay, comma, and let that route be products. So I can choose whatever I want here. Oh, this should be a colon. Okay, so that's one thing I want to do. Let me close this, I don't need it anymore. Another thing is that because I want to talk to Cosmos DB, I need to add a NPM package. So let me go into this folder here and go NPM install a package called at Azure slash Cosmos and save locally. And this should go into the API project. So we're just getting that package and there we go. Now, back into my project. I'm going to create a folder here called data. And in that data folder, I want to have two helper JavaScript modules. The first one, I'm going to call it data context. So new file data context.js. And then I'll have another file here, which I will call seed data. Now, data context is a module that will be responsible for creating the database and the container if they don't exist in Cosmos DB. And seed data will contain some dummy data that I will seed into the database just to make sure that everything's working. So this is the code for data context. I'm just gonna copy it and put it in here. So what does this do? Basically, 
we have one function that takes a client object, database ID, container ID, and a partition key. Now, with Cosmos DB, you need a partition key, and this is the way Cosmos manages the way that the data is distributed. So here it says it's going to create the database with this command, create if it not exists. And then later on, it's going to create the container. So all this thing does is create the database if it doesn't exist and create a container if it doesn't exist. So I'm going to close this. The next thing I want to do is get the code for seeding the data. And what does this do? Well, it's going to create some products, 10 products, strawberries, sliced bread, etc., etc. So this is something we'll use later on. The next thing I want to do is create a shared folder here. And in this shared folder, I'm going to create a node module that is the interface between the application and the database. So it's going to have the functions that seed the data, the functions that get the data, post the data, put the data, and all that stuff. So I'm going to create a new file here in this folder, and I shall call it productdata.js. So I have here two functions. One function is for seeding products, and the other function is for getting the products. And here I'm exporting both of these, okay? And by the way, this imports the data context class so I call the data context class here, Cosmos Client, I pass it these, and it is this that is going to create the database if it doesn't exist. So, and it's also going to seed the data. So this function here, seed products, it's basically calling the seed data function and it's going to seed for us the data. So let me close this. I can test it in a moment, but before I test it, I need to uh, use the parameters that I mentioned earlier on in order to talk to Cosmos DB. And that is done by coming under API and then there's this file called local settings JSON. This is the file that allows you to enter environment variables. So I'm going to enter the credentials and the endpoint for Cosmos DB here as environment variables. So I'm going to put a comma here and then go and grab. So these are the environment variables that I need. I'm going to add them here. Let me make this bigger. So the endpoint, you remember I practice over here. The endpoint is the correct one, so I don't need to have this. But I know that the key, I mangle the key here. So let me copy this key and paste it here. So these are environment variables that I need. We have the endpoint, we have the partition key. For this partition key, we're going to just use the name as a path. This is the key to access the database. Now I want to call the database catalog and I want to call a container inside of that database products. So I think I'm all set here. Next thing, let me add another function. So I need two endpoints here in my API. One endpoint has been created already and that's to do a get. I want to create another endpoint that's going to seed for me the data. So I'm going to come under Azure here and here I add a, a new function and it's going to be just like before an HTTP trigger and for this one I will call it products seed. So to hit this endpoint we're going to go slash products slash seed and send a post request. And I do have Postman here that's going to help me send that request. So I'm done with this. Now, the code for both of these functions. So I have two functions here. I have this products get and products seed. For my product seed and my products get, the logic goes into this index.js. At the moment, the logic is just template code. Let me come to index.js under seed and let me add the code for that. So what's happening here, we're just going to call this module and call the seed products method. So if you remember, we created under shared, we created this module here and we have a function called seed products. So if we want to seed products, all we do is call that function. The next one is products gets. And with this one, I just want to read some data. This one does the same thing. In this file, there's a function that, that's called get products, and I'm just going to call that get products method. So at this point in time, I think we should be ready to try it out. So I'm going to hit Control F5. 
And now you see that we have these two endpoints. The first thing I want to do is to see if I can seed data. So I'm going to copy this and go into Postman. Here's my Postman. I'm going to post and paste this. It's taking too long. If there is a mistake, it's because of the code that I had. So you get this message which says the database has been seeded with 10 products. So I have some data in the database. Let me go back to the Azure here and let's go to Data Explorer. And sure enough, we have here a database called Catalog and a container called Products. So if I click on the Products and look at, click on Items, these are all the items that were created. If you remember, there were strawberries and sliced bread and so on and so forth. So we're good. Things are working. Let's check out the GET. GET we can check out actually in the browser. We click on Control click to open it up in a browser and there you go. We're getting our data from Cosmos DB. So far so good. I'll assume that my APIs are complete. They have the put, the post, the delete and all that stuff. But because we're short of time and I want to finish on time, I'm going to say, okay, I'm done with my API. Let me now create my Blazor app. I'm going to come back here to the root of my folder and I'm going to create a Blazor app now. So to do Blazor, you can go .NET, new, Blazor, W-A-S-M, minus O, which is the output directory, and I'm just gonna call it Blazor app. So it's going to create for me a Blazor application in a subdirectory called Blazor app. Now, I need to create a solution file for the Blazor app. And you might ask, you know, why do you need a solution file if you have only one C-sharp app? Well, there's a C-sharp app and there's a Node app. I need a solution file for the C-sharp app because GitHub Actions works much smoother if you have a solution file. That helps it identify your project. So I will use the .NET command to create a solution file. So if I look at, look at what it created, it created for me uh, az static web app dot sln. I want to now attach the project file that's in the Blazor folder to the solution file. And the way to do it is .NET sln add Blazor app slash Blazor app dot cs P-R-O-J, because in this new Blazor application, there is a project file by that name. So if I do this, it says project has been added to the solution. So now I can go into my Blazor app and just for curiosity, let's run it. So I can say .NET run. So now I can go to localhost 5000 and something happens. Nothing super interesting at least we know it's working. So I'm going to close this instance of VS Code that I used to build my application, my API. I don't need that anymore. I'll open it at that folder level, Blazor, and open it here, Blazor. New folder, new class file, and then this is product. This is one class I need, and the other one is constants. Now, let me get this code for product and constants. So what this is simply, I'm, I'm returning the endpoint for the API, which later on, when we go into production, it's going to be simply this. In development on my machine, this is where my API is. So that's all this class is for, okay? And then for my products, okay, so here, the, this maps the, the properties of my API. I've actually commented out quantity simply to make it simple that, so I don't, I have less stuff to enter. So I just commented out quantity, it's not that important, okay? So now we have these two classes. Um, the next thing I want to do is in imports, I want to import the namespace that I just created. So I'm going to say using Blazor app models. Now this is a place where you can do global imports so that these classes can be visible in all the Razor pages. Already in this application, we have these three Razor pages. We have the index, which is the home page, you could say, and we have fetch data and counter. I'm going to delete these. 
and on delete also fetch data. So let me just implement the index page. This is my index page. And on my index page, I have the code for that. I'll delete all of this. And here's my index page. When you look at the code for this, I have a link here for adding. And of course, my adding will not work because I didn't complete the API for that, but it will still show. Over here, I have a table that's going to display the headings for the data coming from my API. And here in the body section of this HTML table, I'm going to display the products. And again, I commented out quantity because I wanted to keep it simple. And there are links here for edit and delete. Now, this is what really matters here. I declare a variable here for an array of products and I get my base URL from the constants class. And you remember there was a, a property there called base URL. So I get the base URL from there and I use this HTTP clients object. It is this here, I'm dependency injecting this HTTP client object. And it's got a method called get from JSON async. And it's basically going to hydrate an array of products by making a request to this endpoint. Let's just see that the index works. Yeah, my main layout. So there is this thing called the main layout and it is basically the, the template for the home page. I'm going to come in here and overwrite it. So this main layout, I'll get rid of all this stuff and keep it very simple. And then also there is the navigation. There's a lot of navigation here, but I want to keep it very, very simple. So I'm going to come in here and override it with this. Let me run this. So in order to run this, we need to do two things. I need to go and run the API first. So I can go into the API folder and you can say func start. And this starts the Azure function. So now that we did this, let me start the Blazor app. So to start the Blazor app, I can say .NET run. Okay, so let's go into a browser and see if this is going to work. Local host colon 5000. Okay, something is wrong. Function F12 has been blocked by course policy. Ah, okay, I forgot something. So there was something about course that we needed to put inside of the API application. So let me go into the API application here. And I forgot to do that, but it's good that we're getting that message. I'm going to open this up with notepad plus plus, and then I'll have to find that particular command. Yeah, I needed to add this. So that should do it. Save this. And then I need to stop this and start it again, the server. And go back in here, maybe stop this again, just in case and restart it. Yeah, this works. So it went to the service and read all the stuff that needs to be deleted. And of course, the add, the edit, and the delete, they don't work because we didn't complete the project. Now we're ready to find out how Azure static web apps work. To do that, we need to push our code into a GitHub repo. So I'm going to stop this here and let me go to the file system. So if you look at the file system, as I said, we have two projects on the API app that I have this Git repo. I don't want this repo because I want the repo to be on the parent directory. I'm going to delete that. And so if I go to the API folder and I do a DIR here, DIR, in this folder, I have a Git ignore, right? I also need a Git ignore in my Blazor folder. So I'm going to go CD Blazor. And let me create a git ignore here too. So I can go uh, .NET new git ignore. So now I have two git ignores, one for the node app and one for the Blazor app. Now, let me go into GitHub to my GitHub repo, GitHub and create a repo here. So I'll create a new repo here and let me call it net BC Azure static that's good enough. Okay. And then create a repository here and let me push my code into there. So come here in this level here, I'm doing say git init, 
git add this git uh, commit minus m first commit and then git i can paste all that stuff that i copied from there now there's one thing i need to do before i actually push this thing to or expect it to work i forgot to do one thing so I'll go back into my constants here and i'm going to comment out this endpoint and use this endpoint instead because in production the api and the static app they reside under the same web application so you don't need this localhost 771 it's not going to work okay so if i save this okay i will have to push this i'll say git add this git commit minus m let's say uh, changed api endpoint and then git push origin so now we have our repository now let's go into azure static web apps so i'm going to go to the home here and create a web app static web app which is this one here this is the new service that's in preview as you can see here so click on this and then add a new static web app app so i i i will do the enterprise version just to be sure now i'm going to create a new resource group so i'm going to say as static web app let me say put the word netbc here just in case i have something by that name already i'll just put here hyphen resource group okay the name of the app netbc static and that seems to be a good name the region as i said before these are the regions that are currently supported so i'm going to use west us and now you have to sign in to github because this wizard it connects you with github and your repo so that it does some magic for you so let's log in and the organization i'm going to choose this organization the repository now the repository if i just type in net bc for example this is the one that i just created net bc az static and the branch of course is going to be master review and create and let's create this so it's going to provision this and it doesn't really take too much time okay so it says go to resource now if you click on this link here it will take you to the workflow file in github and that is a yaml file so these are the instructions for actually deploying your app into azure into this azure static web app and then you have this actions here this action now has been triggered and it's going to fail why is it going to fail because there are some parameters inside of this yaml file that are still incomplete so i'm not going to waste my time on this one because later on we'll find out it's going to fail let's go back to code and now we have a new folder called github workflows and inside of this github workflows we have a yaml file by the way before you forget you should actually do a pull here because a new file has been created and this is the yaml file so you see you can pull a yaml file here. so let me click on this there are a few things that we need to change here first of all because we have a blazor app we need to actually publish the artifacts that pertain to blazor so we need to create the index file and all the dls that are going to be part of that static web app so there's some commands that we need to add here i'm going to add these these are tasks that we need to add inside of our yaml file so let me edit this and it goes right before build and deploy right here yeah there we go oh so this is one thing we need to do and then the other thing is so this command what does this command do what did i do here first of all we are using dotnet okay we need to use dotnet here because as i said earlier on a static web apps they don't support blazor yet in the wizard but if you put the right tasks in here it's going to work so here we're saying we're going to be using dotnet and then to build the app you have to do dotnet publish uh 
in release mode, and then the output directory is the published directory. So it's going to create all those artifacts inside of this published directory. So the other thing we need to do down here is, so there are these two sections here, these three sections you could say. Now the API location is API, we don't need to change that. The app location is going to be WW root and the published folder. And the app artifact location is going to be the same. So I have to come here and change these to this. So this is what I did. I changed this and I changed that, okay? So I think we're in a good position now to, to commit. I'm going to say updated YAML file and let's commit the changes. That has committed since you staged editing, okay? Let's see now, come here and you see the first workflow did not work. And the second one is now processing. So I'm hoping that this will work. Let's click on this and see what's happening. We can follow the, the tasks here. At the moment it's building the app, then it's going to do build and deploy. So this is what we have added. Still building, but it's, it's moving forward. Hopefully it will be done soon. And then it's gonna push something to the server, but of course it's not gonna work because it's missing the environment variables. Hopefully once we have the environment variables there, then it should work. So the job completed successfully. Now let's go here, click on overview, and then I can click on my endpoint here, and you can see something happened. But of course, data is not being loaded and we know why it's not being loaded because the environment variables are missing. So let me come back here to configuration, add. So the first thing I need is the endpoint for the database because this API talks to the database and I need to provide all the stuff that I had in my API uh, Azure Functions project. So that's one endpoint thing. I need to add another one and that is the partition key. But I think, you know, even if we don't complete this, at least you get the idea that if you have an API and you have a static web app using this new service, you can just deploy the whole thing into one application or one service in Azure. We just want to see the fruit of the pudding. So I save that. Okay, let me add two more. So save, let me add the key and another one. The database is going to be called catalog. Probably have the name from here from before, catalog. Okay, and then add the container is going to be called products. And I have it from before. So let me click on okay and hopefully I save and it should save five items. I don't know why this is happening. Sometimes I notice that, you know, Azure doesn't work 100% because I entered five items, but I have only four. So I think what's missing is the last one, the containers. Let me add that container again and products. Okay. And let me save, come on. This is grayed out still. Let me, I'll have to refresh again and do it again because the save button was grayed out for whatever reason, products. Okay. And now still grayed out. The what advanced edit. Okay, it's there. One, two, three, four, five. It's already there. Okay, good. So now let's go back to overview. Oh, I, I, let me save. Okay, let me go to overview. And then go to the site. Here it is. Okay, it's working. Okay, this is as much as I want to cover in the demo. But there is one thing that I found really, really interesting. You remember I said that you can use your custom domain. So let us quickly add that because I really, I've never seen any service before where they give you a SSL certificate free of charge for your custom domain. I always had to buy an SSL certificate. So let me show you this. I'll create a custom domain and then add it to the site and it gives me an SSL certificate for free, free of charge. Let's just quickly do that. I'll go to my 
uh, rebel.ca, which that's my registrar, and add a host to one of my websites and see if this is going to work. So domain manager, methad.ca. Let's try this. Okay, DNS. It's a bit slow, it's spinning. Okay, and then advanced DNS manager. And then let me add a record here. So it's going to be a C name record. And the host is going to be, say, a, a single page, a spa, okay? And then over here, you come to, on Azure, you come to custom domains and say, add a custom domain and it, it will tell you, set it up with the C name. So I'm going to copy this, come over here and set it up with this endpoint save. Okay, so now, of course, this could take time, but if we're lucky, it may simply work. spa.methat.ca. Okay, and then validate this. It validated. Validation successful. Add. Okay, there it is. It's been added. Anyways, let me try that. Let me go spa.methat. Dot ca. You see it works and it's got a certificate. Isn't that cool? I didn't provide a certificate. It gives you a certificate free of charge. Okay. So that's it. But I thank you for coming and uh, bearing with me.